the powerful force pulling on the Earth. We go back to the moon from those famous first small steps to the latest plans to return. And the cold red planet, where once there were rivers and perhaps there was life. Prepare yourself for a flight around the planet Mars with a virtual reality spin down the Mariner Valley. All in Encyclopedia Galactica. These are the first pictures of the Moon and Earth moving together in space. They came from Galileo in December 1992. Slingshotting towards Jupiter, the probe had captured a new perspective, Earth with its only natural satellite, the Moon. These close-ups showed the lava fields of the moon, differentiated in false color. They were a chance to test Galileo's equipment, for in 1995 the craft will be imaging the moons of Jupiter. Meanwhile, Galileo was over the lunar North Pole, a region difficult to see from Earth. Like much of the surface, it's pocked with craters, the impacts of meteorites during four and a half billion years. An ancient, barren terrain, untouched by wind or weather. Although there's no air to breathe, the moon is ripe for colonization. Next century, there's every possibility that permanent lunar bases will be under construction. They'll be like Antarctic research stations, but more self-sufficient, a network of pressurized modules to sustain human life. Oxygen may be produced from lunar rock and water by chemically combining oxygen and hydrogen. Biospheric tanks will be the farms of the moon. Augmented with organic fertilizer, food crops will grow in lunar soil, in lunar greenhouses. From these bases, pioneers will explore the moon. They'll travel much further than their 20th century predecessors. The search will be on for industrial opportunities, like mining raw materials. And there'll be science, radio astronomy, free from the noise suffered by receivers on Earth, and photography, cosmic pictures without atmospheric distortion. This is the moon from Earth. And these are scans through a telescope, like the view from an orbiting satellite. a huge crater, and mountain ranges reminiscent of the planet Mercury. The bright highlands peppered with craters. The dark seas that cover 15% of the surface. In fact, they're impact basins filled with ancient lava flat expanses contrasting with the rugged uplands. And again, from over 400,000 kilometers away on Earth, the crater Copernicus. Our view of the moon is constantly changing. If observed at the same time every night, the moon shifts to the east, and its phases change from a crescent to a full moon and back again. One thing is constant, 
the Moon always presents the same phase to Earth. That's because the Moon turns once on its axis in exactly the time it orbits once around Earth. So, whatever the phase, it's the same old phase. How much of the phase is in light depends on its angle to the Sun. At new moon, we see nothing at all. The shadow is total. It's not Earth casting the shadow, but the moon itself in relation to the sun, a continuous monthly cycle. A view from over the poles has the moon and Earth catching sunlight from the right of the picture. As the moon orbits Earth, so it waxes and wanes to an observer on Earth. The cycle takes around 28 days. Here it is again, with the central frame showing the moon phase we see on Earth. Like the moon, many planetary satellites are trapped into showing the same phase. Only if the Moon's orbit stopped would its rotation be apparent on Earth. Compared to Earth, the Moon is tiny. It would fit across North America. Earth's diameter is four times the Moon's. Earth is some 12,700 kilometers wide. 30 Earths would reach the Moon. Such proximity means the Moon exerts a strong gravitational pull. Witness our ocean tides. The Moon tugs on the oceans. A combination of its orbital movement and the rotation of Earth causes an ebb and flow that can make an island out of a promontory. This is an eclipse of the Moon, caused as it passes through the shadow of Earth. On average, there's a Moon eclipse once a year. With Earth starting to blot out light from the Sun, the shadow on the Moon appears red. The shadow is much bigger than the Moon. Our dusty atmosphere bends the light of the Sun to produce the red glow. While a total solar eclipse lasts minutes, a lunar eclipse can be hours. This one, in 1992, had a black shadow, clearly showing the curvature of our planet. The Moon is 400 times nearer to Earth than the Sun, an amazing coincidence, especially at a solar eclipse, when the Moon's shadow scoots across Earth. Now, because the Sun is 400 times the diameter, the Moon can fit exactly over the disk of the Sun, a total solar eclipse. Sometimes the Moon isn't quite big enough. This is an annular eclipse. The reason is the Moon's elliptical orbit, which periodically takes it slightly further from Earth. The Moon is our nearest neighbour, the second brightest object in the sky. We know that moonshine is reflected sunshine and that men have walked on the Moon. But what's its origin? Is it the child of Mother Earth? Very possibly. For shortly after Earth had formed, it's believed to have been struck by another protoplanet. As it reformed, lighter material was blasted into orbit to become the Moon. Gradually, it cooled. A lunar crust solidified. 
But over eons, the moon was bombarded by cosmic debris. Great basins were left. They filled with molten rock flowing from the interior. These hardened to shape the moonscape we know today. Stay with us after the break when we take you to the red planet, Mars. The pictures from the Viking explorers and the very latest in virtual reality spaceflight.